There is a lot going on on Pandora over the course of four games, so it's understandable if you need a refresher. Here is the story of Borderlands in five minutes, mostly. This is Pandora. No, not that one. This lawless planet drew the attention of the Megacorps when they heard tales of an ancient vault full of alien treasure. The hunt for these vaults attracted countless mercenaries, better known as Vault Hunters, and I bet you can't guess what their specialty is. Eventually, Roland, Brick, Mordecai, and Lilith arrive on Pandora, led by a mysterious AI known as Angel. Lilith is what's known as a Siren, one of like six people in the whole galaxy with crazy psychic powers, but that's not super important yet. The Vault Hunters catch the attention of Patricia Tannis, a scientist studying the vaults who's sponsored by the Doll Corporation. Tannis reveals the vault can only be opened once every two centuries with something called a vault key, and the one for this vault has unfortunately been broken and its pieces are held by a bunch of bandits all over Pandora. The four Vault Hunters kill all the bandits, assemble the key and the vault is opened, revealing a giant tentacle monster that had been imprisoned inside called the Destroyer. Of course, the Vault Hunters defeat it, only to discover that the vault's treasure is nowhere to be found. Bogus. Opening the vault triggered the growth of a precious alien element known as Iridium all across Pandora. This attracted the Hyperion Corporation, the largest and most powerful megacorp, and a humble corporate upstart named Jack, or John as some call him, working aboard their moon base but really a space station called Helios. This is where the pre-sequel comes in. Things swiftly go awry for John Jack when Colonel Zarpedon and her rogue PMC the Lost Legion seizes control of Helios in order to prevent Hyperion from opening a vault on Elpis, Pandora's moon, by zapping it with the giant laser. John enlists four new Vault Hunters, along with Lilith and Roland, to save Elpis from certain doom and open the vault. From here, a bunch of crazy shit happens. Jack builds a robot army to retake Helios, some Borderlands 1 characters show up for fan service, you meet some aliens called Iridians and Zarpadon gets crazy glowy powers from them, she gets defeated and we learn the station's laser is actually the eye of that giant destroyer thing from earlier, then Jack reveals that he's actually a power mad jerkwad hellbent on corporate dominance, but that's not really a big surprise now is it? Lilith and Roland bail and finally our heroes make their way into the vault. After the hunters kill the giant sentinel guardian inside, Jack finds a floating runestone that shows him a maddening vision of the future along with the locations of dozens of other vaults, including one right there on Pandora. He goes a bit crazy from the vision but then gets really nuts when Lilith shows up and sucker punches a big old vault symbol right into Jack's face. This brings us to Borderlands 2, where the now president of Hyperion and officially villainous Handsome Jack is luring Vault Hunters to Pandora, hunters like Salvador, Maya, Axton, and Zero, to kill them and keep anyone else from finding the other vault before him. Probably not the best plan, but the guy who's making dummy versions of himself just to mess with people before they explode probably doesn't care about sound logic that much. Welcome to Pandora, kiddos. Anyways, the near-dead Vault Hunters are found by the last remaining Claptrap unit. There was this whole robot uprising after Borderlands 1 and they all had to get scrapped, and they're contacted by the same mysterious angel that helped the original Vault Hunters. She guides them to Sanctuary, a base of operations for the Crimson Raiders, an anti-Hyperion resistance force led by Roland. They quickly learn that a vault key is being transported via train, which they derail and rob with the help of explosives-obsessed tween Tiny Tina. The stalker thought twas all in fun. Pop! Of course, it turns out the key was a ruse and Jack had it the whole time, so instead, the gang gets to fight the Vault Hunter turned killer cyborg Wilhelm. You killed Wilhelm? Our heroes manage to use Wilhelm's Robo Power Core to shield Sanctuary from Jack's retaliatory Moonstrike, but they quickly get double crossed by Angel, who it turns out is actually a siren working for Jack. Also, she's his daughter or something, though that kind of just feels tacked on to make him extra villainy. <laughs> Nicely done, Angel. Now. Let's kill ourselves some Vault Hunters. <laughs> Lilith uses her super duper siren powers to teleport Sanctuary to the other side of the planet for safekeeping, and the Vault Hunters learn that Jack is siphoning Angel's power to charge his key and open the vault. They serve her a hearty plate of mercy killing, but Jack kills Roland in retaliation and captures Lilith to charge the key in Angel's place, and the vault of the warrior is opened. The Vault Hunters kill the giant lava monster inside, then off Jack and rescue Lilith. When she attempts to destroy the vault key, she activates another map revealing vaults on different worlds scattered throughout the galaxy just like Jack saw earlier. A year later, Hyperion begins searching for a new vault. A handsome Jack sympathizer named Reese heads to Pandora to buy a vault key, but while trying to purchase the key from local con artist and thief Fiona, bandits steal the payment and the key turns out to be fake because Fiona's a con artist and a thief. After failing to retrieve the stolen money, Reese and Fiona stumble upon an old Atlas vault hunting project and accidentally install an AI that zaps a copy of the very dead Handsome Jack's personality right into Reese's brain. Reese partners up with Fiona to pursue the project, codenamed Gordis, which turns out to be a robot designed to locate the roaming vaults of the Traveler. Oh, no! 
AI Jack leads Reese and Fiona to Jack's old office on Helios to get an upgrade for Gordas. Jack DOS 95 tricks Reese into uploading his AI into Helios' system so he could take control of Hyperion once again, but Reese disrupts the station's power core and sends it crashing onto the surface of Pandora instead. Meanwhile, a fully upgraded Gordas summons the Vault of the Traveler. Reese, Fiona, Gordas, and a small army of survivors from the Helios crash unite to take down the Traveler. After its defeat, the Vault is opened. Fiona and Reese enter the vault and disappear, never to be seen again, at least until Reese shows up in the trailer for Borderlands 3. And that's where we are now. You're all caught up. For more on Borderlands 3, check out our super detailed breakdown of the reveal trailer. And for all your other Borderlands needs, you're already in the right place. IGN.